Hello everybody and welcome back to Sweet and Sour Soccer and it is that time of the year once again Premier League predictions. Of course this is always a controversial video because let's face it we all disagree with each other so much when it comes to where different teams are going to finish so I'm sure you're going to disagree with me quite a bit on this video but of course if you do drop it in the comments it always helps to see a few nice comments at least but let's waste no more time we've got 20 teams to get through so let's get into it and we're going to start off with AFC Bournemouth of course who did well to stay up last year everyone backing them to go down actually last season and funny enough I see quite a lot doing the same this season now I don't know whether that's because, of course, this is a they've brought in a new manager. Um, a manager, let's be let's be honest here. A lot of us don't know an incredible lot about him. Of course, we might have read a little bit about him, but I don't feel it's a manager which we're really like we know massively about that's had the Premier League experience before. And that partnered with the second season syndrome, of course, will have some people and understandably thinking that it could be born of season that they do go down this season. But I would like to say they seem to have ambitious owners, owners that have already announced upgrades or potentially a new stadium, actually, to their current stadium, as well as that they've spent 40 million already plus, 40 million plus already in the transfer market. I really do like the signing of Cliver and I do think that there's three worse teams than Bournemouth. So I don't think they're going to go down. I've actually got Bournemouth to place 50th position this year. Let's move on to speak about Arsenal. Of course, the Gunners were gunning for the title last season, but sadly, they just came up short. Of course, it was a five-point gap between them and Manchester City in the end. I do have to say, though, I really did enjoy having a team give City some competition because I did think at one point they'd just absolutely blitz it and run away with the league. Of course, maybe a little bit of inexperience, partner with some unlucky injuries to big players did meant that their Premier League did end up falling away. But I think this Arsenal team's going to come back with some might. You know, of course, the signing of Havertz, I'm, I'm interested to see how he does, perhaps more in his natural position. The massive signing, Declan Rice, and as well as Timber, who's going to obviously give them some reinforcement to the centre-back position, which obviously cost them so dearly last season. I think it's fair to say that Arsenal have improved, whereas if you look at City at the moment, they do look like they've weakened. For that reason, this is going to be a controversial one. But boys, ladies, gents, whoever's watching, I have placed Arsenal to be first top of the table come the end of the season. I already know you're going to hate that prediction. Another thing that I did hate was the fact that I couldn't find the Aston Villa's new badge in a central background. But here they are, Aston Villa. Let's talk about these guys next. Um, I think they've improved their squad. Obviously, Tillemans coming in on a free. You've also got uh, Pau Torres, a really good signing to their centre-backs. And you just look at the depth that they've got there as well. Um, a lot of people talk about Villa having to compete on multiple fronts. And, of course, that is true, having to compete on the Conference League as well as having to compete and be competitive because Emery will want this team to be competitive in the Premier League. Now, for that reason, some people might not expect Villa to do as well as last season, but then others, because of these signs that I spoke about, Tillemans, Torres, and let's not forget, obviously, Diaby as well, which is a huge, huge signing, partnered with the fact that they're going to have Emery for a full season. Some are expecting them to do even better than last season. I have to say, I'm actually one of those. I do think Villa will improve. I think they'll go one place better this season. I've got Aston Villa actually finishing sixth come the end of the season. Let's move on to speak about Brentford now and another team which is obviously dividing um, Premier League fans quite a bit. And of course, the main factor is around Ivan Tony because Ivan Tony will spend the majority of the first half of the season out. Uh, can't even train with the team, I believe, until October due to his betting scandal. And of course, that is a lot of goals that they're going to have to uh, replace. Although... There is the question of can Brentford score without Tony? And you did see towards the end of the season that it didn't look too much of an issue. They've also partnered that up with around 50 million already spent. Um, obviously, Shard, who's coming in, he's got big, build, uh, big boots to fill, but it is a signing. And with already other attacking players that can contribute, can pick up goals, I can see why Brentford fans maybe won't be too worried. 
Some people, again, a little bit like Bournemouth, are tipping Brentford to potentially be a shock team to be in trouble this season. I don't see it quite being that bad. I don't think they'll do quite as good as last season, but I have got them placed in a respectable 13th position. I really don't see Brentford struggling and ending up actually in a relegation battle or anything like that. I'm just going to go for a standard mid-table place finish. Let's talk about Brighton next. And I find it interesting with Brighton because it did look like a whole host of stars may have left um, at the end of the season. Of course, at the moment, it still remains that only McAllister has gone and they've continued to strengthen in depth. Obviously, once again, another team like Aston Villa can also throw Newcastle into that where they're going to have to compete on all fronts. And it's something relatively new to them having to compete in Europe. Um, but they have partnered that up with some good free signings. We've seen Milner come in. We've seen Dahoud come in as well. And as well as that, other signings as well to really strengthen the squad um, and really improve that squad depth. Let's not forget Jal Pedro. I really like the look of him. I think he could be a superb, superb player for Brighton this season and could maybe be that um, kind of upfront player that's going to get them a whole host of goals and maybe the striker that they've really been craving to maybe take this Brighton team to the next level. Of course, there's still um, potential departures that might happen, Casiedo, but that, that would mean a huge amount of income. And we do know that Brighton, when they get money, they know how to spend that smartly and they'll probably just find a regen of Caicedo as well as doing it three times cheaper than what they sold him for and allowing them to strengthen the squad further. I think this will be another good season for Brighton. I've actually got them still qualifying for Europe, but I have gone seventh position for Brighton this season, but I still think they're going to be very, very competitive. Let's move on to speak about Burnley because it is Vincent Company's first time managing in the Prem and it was... Burnley coming back up and they're looking very different to how they went down, let's just say. A whole different way of playing and a whole different host of players that have come in. Um, Vincent Company will probably be quite hopeful. Um, some even speculating, could they be a shock team that could potentially get the top 10? I haven't got them to quite do that, but I have think they've brought in some good signings. I like the signing of Oba Femi from Swansea, a really good striker in the championship for Swansea. Be interesting to see what he can do in the Premier League. Um, I have actually got uh, Burnley sorry, finishing 14th this season. I don't think they'll end up in any kind of relegation battle, but I think, you know, it's a very respectable first year back in the Premier League. Let's move on to speak about a team that didn't have a respectable season last season, and that is Chelsea. And a team that has been massively saved by Saudi Arabia and all the money because they basically just dug them out of a financial fair play hole. Um, Chelsea did actually still get fined, I believe, for breaking financial fair play, an £8.5 million fine they received. But I don't think they'll lose any sleep really over that. Um, and of course, with the sales that they've made, they have been able to bring in a fresh new blood and cuckoo Jackson definitely looked like, like uh, looking promising and could solve the problems that they had up front the, last season. The problem they have with Chelsea, though, is their midfield now. It looks terribly, terribly weak after losing the likes of Mount. Havertz, you've also lost Kovacic. And when you look at it, you've got the likes of Gallagher. Ooh, Gallagher starting. I really don't rate Gallagher, if you could not guess. A young Enzo Fernandez, And I don't even know who the third midfielder would be at this point. I think for that reason, I actually think Pochettino could actually find it a little bit of a difficult first season unless we see some real signings coming in. But at the moment, nothing really massively confirmed. It looks like Brighton are still playing tough when it comes to Cassiedo. So I have actually got Chelsea placing in eighth position at the moment. I do think they've got a lot of work to be done, to be honest. Let's move on and speak about Crystal Palace next and a team that I think could perhaps struggle. Um, Roy Hodgson, he kept them up last season and he did really well. But for me, that should have been it. That should have been goodbye. I really do think that Palace have perhaps stepped back on what they were trying to build. Of course, Vieira may have had to go and Hodgson did come in and he did save Palace. But to lose the ha, there's been rumours that Alassie might be getting some interest from some of the bigger clubs in the Premier League. And if he goes, you really feel that kind of exciting team that Palace was starting to build is kind of going back a bit. And we did see once Hodgson did save Palace, but let's face it, the football did go well back to Roy Hodgson kind of football. And it kind of reiterated the whole reason that they got rid of him. I think I could really see Palace struggling this season. And in fact, I've got them as a surprise shock 
to actually go down. I've got Palace actually finishing at 18th position. I know that might shock a few, but I really do think the appointment of Roy Hodgson for full time was a really disappointing one. And I do think, you know, it's it, they've just took some steps back. Let's talk about Everton next. Obviously, a team which um, have tried to be vigilant within the transfer market. Obviously, the signing of Ashley Young and Dan Juma. Um, in some ways, it looks like Everton might still have some financial fair play difficulties. But at the same time, we are seeing them been linked to get, bringing them some, a striker. That striker, whoever it will be, could be a massive, massive thing for Everton. And ultimately, a striker could save them or could even push them away from a relegation battle come this year. Of course, this would be the third season in a row for Everton if they don't get away from this relegation scrap, would be in this relegation scrap. And I know even speaking of some Everton fans, there's sometimes a feeling of how long is it actually going to go on for before we eventually go down rather than are we going to actually pull away and see ourselves go further on book back up the table? I mean, it's hard to know at the moment what Everton are going to do, especially when we don't know. There's been a couple of names linked of possible strikers um, that could come in. Whoever it is needs to do something really, really big. And I think for that reason, at the moment, I'm still expecting Everton to struggle this season. I haven't got you to go down, but for the third time in um, free season, I've got you just narrowly missing it. 17th position at the moment. Let's go on to speak about Fulham. Of course, uh, Marco Silva that's staying now, which is a huge, huge boost, in my opinion, for Fulham. Um, Mitrovic, obviously not the same, can be said for him. And they have brought in a striker, Raul Jimenez, um, to maybe try and get some of those goals. Really interesting one as a Wolves fan to speak on. Jimenez hasn't been the same since that horror, horror injury. Um, just lost some of his natural instincts and his fearfulness. And I'm sorry, but who can blame him? It was a horrible, horrible tackle. And obviously it wasn't on purpose, but the guy nearly lost his life. Um, you know, I really do hope in some ways he does well for Fulham, but I'm not fully convinced on that signing. I think Fulham, again, I don't see Fulham potentially being a team that does go down. But having said that, I don't think they're going to do quite as well as last season. I have actually got Fulham placing in 12th position this season. A nice stable mid-table finish. I think most Fulham fans will be happy with that. I'm going to guess there will be anyway. Let's move on to speaking about Liverpool, a Liverpool team that will be wanting much, much better than last season. And I think this is going to be an interesting season for Liverpool because in some ways they've made some promising signings. We've obviously seen um, we've seen uh, McAllister come in, Sabasloy, however you say it. <laughs> and then the forward line is looking fantastic, isn't it? Nunes, Gakpo, Salah, Jota. Um, I may have even missed one. I have missed one. I can't think of his name. It's gone. But yeah, they've got a Luis Diaz. That's who I was thinking of. They've got a really, really strong forward line. And I think they're not, not going to have any problems scoring. Um, it will be interesting to see if the defence can start to become a bit more stable. And I do think a little bit like Chelsea, they still, even though they've brought in a couple of players, really need to improve that midfield line now that we've seen the likes of Fabinho and Henderson obviously tempted away by the Saudi Arabia money. Um, but I have got um, Liverpool to finish quite high this season. I think they will be back within the top four. And I'm actually going to play some just to finish behind Arsenal and Man City. I do think there'll be still quite a bit of a gap between Arsenal, Man City and the rest. But I have got Liverpool to finish third. I do think they'll improve. Some of those players are, especially the forward players, are quite young. I'm interested to see how Darwin Nunes improves in particular. But I think they're going to have a lot, a lot of goals in them. Right. Let's move on to Luton Town because Luton Town, absolutely fantastic to come up. Um, obviously, as we know, they've got to do some improvements to the stadium to make it all regulated, uh, 10 million potentially spent. But I'm not going to concentrate on that. I'm going to concentrate on what they've been doing in the transfer market because they've not been exactly breaking the bank. But what they have been doing for me is building like what I'd almost call the ultimate championship team that you can put together. You know, if you were to create a championship team, which was well-priced within range, that you could steal players from without having to pay too much, that's exactly what Luton have been doing. I think it's very smart from Luton. You've seen some clubs before that go up, they overinvest, they don't stay up, and then the club really struggles if they go back down. I think that what they're building is something that if they do come up, 
They're going to make the most of the money. They go back down. They're going to have a really strong team already in place to challenge for the championship. And of course, if any of them do really well, they could see some massive, massive bids go in as well. I think it's a really smart um, way to handle things, especially if you, you know, you're not made of money. The question is, though, is that going to be enough for Luton Town to be competitive? I do hope they are the shock um, of the season, to be honest, a little bit like Bournemouth last season. But sadly, at the moment, I have got Luton finishing in 19th. I don't want to hear any of this rubbish though, about Luton uh, potentially breaking Derby's record. They're too strong a team for that. Guys, just a quick one for me before we get back to the video. If you are enjoying the video and you're new here, why not hit that subscribe button? And regardless of if you're new here or not, please do me a massive favour right this second. Hit that like button. It does honestly help the channel out a lot when you do it and hopefully pushes it onto more people. So if you can do it, please do. And let's get back to speaking about my Premier League predictions for that. Manchester City are up next. And obviously the citizens, um, you can probably already guess where I'm going to uh, place these guys. As I previously said when speaking about Arsenal. So I won't spend too long on these guys. I do think they have weakened a little bit compared to last season. I'm still waiting for a major, major signing to come in. And it wouldn't surprise me if we do see something that just wipes the floor with it. Because it's unusual that City have uh, seen some players go and without some big, big signing coming in. But at the moment, there's been no potential signs of it. And you do wonder, obviously, after a, a quadruple, was it? A treble, whichever one it was, they won a lot of trophies last season, whether they can replicate that again. As you can probably guess, I've got City place in second position for this season. Let's move on to speak about their, obviously, rivals across the, the other side of Manchester. Manchester United um, Ten Hag now is really starting to get his team put together. We've seen Onana come in, um, the goalkeeper. This is the kind of goalkeeper that he wanted, a ball-playing goalkeeper, someone that's comfortable with his feet. It does have to be asked, is he the best keeper, though, at doing what the old-fashioned keepers would do and actually save shots, but that's another matter. Ten Hag is getting the team that he wants to put together. It looks like they're going to pick up some kind of striker, uh, whether that is going to be a huge sign-in. But it, it does look like there's money in the bank for United to go again and get him maybe one or possibly two big signings. I think it's going to be interesting season for Ten Hag um, because this is getting more and more his team. Um, I have actually got United, though, to still comfortably finish in the top four. I have got them in fourth position. And I do think, though, but Ten Hag will probably need to win a trophy with that to maybe just keep the Man United fans maybe not so much. I don't know. I, I, do, I just think United need to win something, don't they, each season. Let's even speak about Newcastle United and fair play to these guys. Um, really looking forward to seeing what they do in the Champions League this season. The question is always going to be, though, is that going to affect them? Um, I do look at Newcastle United in some ways. I'm comparing them to Aston Villa because... In some ways, I prefer Villa's squad depth in certain positions. In other ways, I prefer Newcastle United's squad depth in other positions, such as striker, the combination of Wilson and Isaac, that two players that can get goals, as we saw last season. Eddie Howe did have some trouble. And both teams have actually made uh, choosing between them. And both teams have obviously made um, some big signings. You know, Barnes coming in, Tonali go, going in, coming in as well. And obviously, they have had to lose St. Maximum, but I do think Barnes is perhaps a net up at better upgrade for one St. Maximum injury problems, maybe inconsistency as well. Um, so they're being smart, and it's interesting to see even Newcastle United with all the riches they have are having to be smart, win this market because of financial fair play. I think it's going to be a big ask for Newcastle United to maintain their Champions League status purely because they're going to have to be playing in the Champions League, but on top of that as well. They're also going to have the challenge of the other teams around them really coming back with some force, for example, Liverpool and et cetera, et cetera. Um, those teams that are your typical big seven teams, once they have a bad season, they usually go at some might to try and correct that. I have got Newcastle still placing in a decent position though. I have gone fifth this season. I still think that would be a really, really good season for the Geordies. Let's move on to speaking about Forest now and the Forest team, which, let's be honest, have got quite an excitable um, young looking team, especially in attack. Brennan Johnson, uh, Morgan Gibbs White, partner that up with Alanga. And it, our Nui towards the end of the season, it seemed all season, you know, Nottingham Forest really didn't need 
that striker. And now a new seems to step up at the end of the season. So it'll be really interesting to see how they get on. I don't think Forest is going to have any problems this season, to be honest. I think they're going to be a very stable Premier League team. Of course, they have got the one major thing they need to sort out, goalkeeper issues. I do think Henderson happens at some point. Um, I just think they're both a bit tick for tack toe at the moment or whatever the saying is um, but I do think they will manage to get Henderson goalkeeping issues then sorted and they can focus on the season I've got Forest placing in a standard mid-table place just in the bottom half in 11th position let's move on speaking about the Blades next Sheffield United um, obviously back in the Premier League and interestingly just I haven't really spent that much at the moment. Um, I do know that they don't. I don't think they can, um, I, or the owner doesn't have the appetite for it. And for a lot of reasons, that's why a lot are, are writing Sheffield United off this season. I do think they need some more signings to be competitive. I'm going to be absolutely honest, um, and it would be a shock if I'm being completely honest that they stay up. Of course, that won't discourage. Uh, the Sheffield United fans, they'll have that belief and they'll want to see their players fight to the end. Sadly for you guys, I had to play someone 20th and I have gone for you. I'd be interested to see if you really disagree in the comments, though, Sheffield United fans, why uh, you disagree. Because, you know, I'd love to hear I'm, I'm genuinely missing something or just hearing about how hopeful you are for the upcoming season. Let's move on to speak about Spurs. And it's interesting with Spurs because I really do like Poster Cogley. Almost to the point where I was debating before I started, you know, like making my list almost decide where I was going to place people about whether Spurs could actually mount a challenge again for the top four this season. Um, I like his attitude. I like how he's come in. And I feel long term, if he's given the time, he'll really make some change at Tottenham. A lot of it's going to obviously depend on what they do with Harry Kane. But I don't know with Tottenham. I was going through the squad I, I was going through the squad with Tottenham and, you know, my question of are they going to make top four, I was like, not a chance. And then I started comparing them to other teams and I just kept getting further and further down my list. Ultimately, I've ended up putting them in ninth, which sounds really, really harsh, but they just seem to be falling behind the lack of money, um, whether it's Levy or Enyik, um, who I believe is the Spurs owner. They need some cash injection. And I know they've brought Madison in. They've had to make the, I think, Kulaveski a permanent as well. I still think that Tottenham team needs a lot. But ninth position. West Ham, uh, another team across the London. And obviously, they didn't do that well in the league last season. But in despite of that, and I've just realised I've got the old West Ham badge up. But sorry, guys. I like, I like this badge. I like their old badge anyway. <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, I, I think it's going to be interesting how they spend that rice money is really going to answer where they finish this um, this season. It shows from what we've seen already. They've been making bids. They've definitely got the money. And um, they've also got the Europa League to contend with, obviously, after winning the Conference League as well. And I do think we'll see Newcastle, uh, West Ham, I should say, rather, line up very differently to what we're seeing at the moment come at the end of the transfer window. David Boyce does seem quite set in bringing in pre uh, proven Premier League talent. The only problem with that is it's great in some sense because, well, the proven Premier League talent. But and then at the same time, you know, you're going to have to pay a massive book for them. Um, but they have, of course, got the money to do so with the Declan Rice um, fee that they got a huge over 100 million transfer. I've got a feeling West Ham will do fine this season. I don't think they're going to get back into European places, but I have got them placing at bang mid table, 10th position. Let's finish off with my club Wolves. And I could speak about these guys for probably 15, 20 minute run. And obviously, I'm not going to. Um, Things are looking very bleak. You know, you look at the last pre-season friendly we had against Celtic. Matt Doherty, who's just re-signed for us, openly admitting it weren't an easy decision. Same things in the back room aren't really good at the moment. Uh, Lopetegui basically is coming out and saying, if we want to be competitive in the league, we need more signings. And I've always said with Wolves, as a Wolves fan, I've been like, we'll be all right. We'll finish about 13th, I think. But then I started going through it. And you look at our starting 11, it's all right. And then you go... What happens if that player gets injured? What happens if that player gets injured? And that's where we're really going to struggle. This squad as a whole is very, very weak. The starting 11, I think, I think competitive. I can't think can be competitive, but you need a competitive squad to survive a season, not a competitive starting 11. Really worrying times for Wolves. I've not gone as for us to go down. 
I still think we're too strong to go down. Famous last words. But I have actually really decreased where I thought we would be. 16th position is my final prediction for the Premier League 23-24 season. Guys, let me know where I went right. Let me know where I went wrong. And obviously, if you have enjoyed the video, as always, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel as well. And hopefully I'll catch you on another video. Premier League predictions coming back, not this week, the week after as well. So there'll be plenty for you. Weekly Premier League predictions, I should say. And they're going to have an added twist this season too. So guys, make sure to subscribe. Catch you on the next one. Goodbye.